Hello everyone, Barb here from barbaderholt.closetomyheart.com. This is the card we are going to make today. This is one of my favorite techniques. It's heat embossing. I don't know why I don't do it more often other than you have to drag out your heat gun and all the different things to do it. But once I do it, I love it. Oh, I'll bring that up closer so you can really see it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we are going to use the All-Star Birthday stamp set, which is a companion stamp set that is to go with the Star Shaker Thin Cut set. We're going to use some pewter ink and Versamark ink. This is what I like to use to stamp my image when I'm going to heat emboss it. Um, this is the white powder, just simple white embossing powder. My powder bag so that I can eliminate the static. I've got my heat gun. This is an old one from close to my heart, but it, it works really well. And let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little frame. This is the frame that I cut using mint Ink, uh, mint paper and I used this thin cut so it gave me that little frame and this white big star here was made using this big thin cut that's a part of the star shaker thin cut set so right now I'm just centering this star as best I can this gray panel of pewter cardstock is four by five and a quarter so that I have a nice little border on my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base, which this is one of the close to my heart card bases that we will end up using. First thing I do, I'm going to take my powder bag. This is an anti-static powder tool bag. And I'm pouncing that around and that eliminates the static electricity so that when you stamp your image with your Versamark ink, you don't end up with stray pieces of embossing powder sticking where you don't want it. So this is this little star image that's on here, and I thought it looked fun to put this in each corner of the star. And yes, my Versamark ink pad is atrocious looking. I know it is, but it still works, so I'm using it. Okay, and I'm putting this in each little corner here. And the other thing I want to do is take this it's this border of stars. It's this little image here. And I want to put this on the bottom. So I'm going to down and up. I'm going to pull up this star, close my embossing, my Versamark ink. And what I want to do is bring in a piece of folded paper. This is how I funnel the excess embossing powder back into the little pot that it lives in. And I'm sprinkling the embossing powder all over this. And then I'm tapping off the excess onto this little piece of folded paper. Got the powder on there, and while I've got my pot still open, I'm going to funnel that excess powder into that pot and get this closed up before I spill it all over the place. Why do you think I know to do that? I have spilled before. I'm going to turn on my heat gun, it's going to get noisy. Sorry. And I like to just feel that it's warm. And I'm going to melt the powder. And you can 
keep the back side and the front side of the paper to help minimize the warping. And you can see when it gets shiny that it's heated up and melted. melted you can see it's a little shiny and good to go now I'm gonna pull in this star I'm gonna tap off the, the powder that ended up on there from my embossing buddy or embossing powder bag and I'm gonna glue this down just like so and then I'm going to take the little frame and first I'm going to lay it on here and you have to spin it a little bit to find that exact placement um, the star is not exactly equal so you have to spin it around and you can see now it per fits perfectly on there so now I know which way it goes and I can get it on there without getting glue all over while I try to futz with it so what kind of stamping techniques do you like to do that you forget that you like to do <laughs> heat embossing is mine just using glue because then I can slip it around a little bit just in case I don't get it lined up perfectly when I place it. Okay, now the next image I'm going to use is this one that says you're a star. And I've got my pewter ink which matches the cardstock perfectly. I've got it inked up nice and I'm going to put it at, a, at an angle down and up nice vibrant stamping and that's it for the top of the card so you can use tape runner or glue whichever works for you whichever you like I'm going to use glue today um, but a tape runner works just fine and I have the card base and I'm going to Go for a pretty even border around there. Give it a little rub it up a do, and then I'm going to open up the inside. And I have picked off three of the little star images off of the stamp set and clustered them together on one of the little baby blocks. And I am going to do a little repeat stamping, going up the side edge of the inside of the card. That's another thing that I don't often remember to do is do a little bit of stamping on the inside of my card. It's a nice little surprise. Stamp that off and then I've got well it says hooray and what I thought I would do is first time stamp at full strength, pick it up, move it down, stamp again and then stamp again. That's called repeat stamping, stamping off, shadow stamping, but it's just repeating the image with the ink that's on your stamp without re-inking in between and you get that shadow effect. And this is the card. That's it. Not bad. I like it. I think that's a fun technique and it uses your star shaker without having to make a shaker and this new all-star birthday shaker set. 
I hope you'll give this technique a try. Get out your embossing tools and have a little fun. Thank you for stopping by. Have a blessed crafty day, and I'll see you next time.